Well, I really ought to be leaving pretty soon now, though. Well, Miriam's not going anywhere. And neither am I. Well, I thought I'd better get over to see her earlier than usual this morning because I have a 10.30 meeting. Well, she's not going to miss you this one morning. <clears throat> Nancy, it's very important for Miriam to know how much we care for her. Well, don't you think it's important to let me know how much you care for me? But I come over here and have breakfast almost every morning. That's only because I invite you, Charles. Nancy, if I didn't want to be with you, I wouldn't be here. Why don't you think about moving in here again? Now, Nancy, we've been all through that, and frankly, I'm a little surprised that you don't show more understanding. But, Charles, you know I want to do everything I can to help, and that's why we ought to be together. Then why won't you come with me to the hospital to visit her? Last thing I want to do is hurt her. Jean, you make Mama sound like some little gray-haired old lady that sits around knitting all day, waiting for the family to come home. <laughs> I can barely keep up with her. Mm, I guess you're right. But for the past two years, Jimmy and I have been her life, and and now you're back, and I think it's time that you take your rightful place as woman of the house. Mm. But how do I tell her without making her feel like she's discarded? Are you two still sitting here? Jean, I thought you had a job to go to. Uh, I called Vicky, and she knows that I'm going to be late. Is something wrong? Mama, there's something we'd like to talk to you about. Well, what is it? Um, well, Carla and I were thinking that we need uh, more time alone. You're going on a honeymoon? No, Mama. <laughs> Well, you should. Why don't you take one of those romantic cruises I keep seeing on the TV that's so... Maybe later, but right now there's another matter to attend to. Now, Mom, I love you, and I don't know what Jimmy and I would have done without you. And You've always taken care of me and pointed me in the right direction, and, and when I fail, you always pick me up. And I'm always going to need that from you, Mom. But... Carla's back now, and... Uh... We just have a lot of things that we have to work out. And, I mean, we've come a long way already, but uh, I just think it's important that we do the right thing this time is all. Jean, what are you trying to say? Mom, we're thinking about not moving back to the duplex with you. Well, we're, um, we'd like to live here if Terry will sell us the house. Mama, now, I don't want to hurt you, and I... You mean so much to me, but I feel that this is the best thing for Carla and me right now. I hope you understand. Well, I think it's a good idea. In fact, <laughs> oh, you I was going to suggest it myself. <laughs> it's becoming so hard for me to find places to go to give you people some time alone. No, it's not like we don't want you around. Oh. Understand, and you know, two women shouldn't be in running the same house anyway. Hey, Mama, you don't mind moving back to the duplex alone? Alone? Loneliness is a state of mind, and besides, it's not like we won't be together. Yeah, oh. As close as a telephone. Uh, <laughs> and I'll have plenty of room for my grandson to come and spend the night with me. Listen, you sound like you're still in bed. I'm sorry I, if I called so early. No, honey, I have to get up anyway. I'm glad you called. Um, really sorry the kind of mood I was in when you called last night. 
was wrong? Exams, you know, school in general, just uh, starting to get to me. You don't sound too happy. Well, you know, the, um, I'm not sure how I did this this semester, and I'm still waiting for some med schools that haven't rejected me yet. Reject? Russ, I didn't know. How, how many rejections? Just three. Three? Well, why didn't you tell me? Well, you were so involved in your own career, I just didn't think that you'd be interested. I mean, of course I'm interested. You're my husband. There's always that possibility that I won't make it. Yes, you will make it, and you'll make a wonderful doctor, too. Right, wonderful. Um, am I forgiven for last night? Am I forgiven for staying away for so long? Forgiven. You too. Uh, listen, uh, you coming to the graduation Friday night? What time is it? Six. Of course I'm gonna be there. Um, but I'm gonna have to be back here by nine o'clock for my first show. It's only an hour's flight. Russ, I miss you. Me too. Listen, um, since classes are all done and everything, you think you could fly up here for a couple days? Uh, no, I can't. Why? Uh, just a lot of preparations for graduations, you know. More important stuff than me, huh? Nothing's more important than you. Just, there's a lot of loose ends to tie up, that's all, you know. And uh, besides, I'll be seeing you, you know, Friday, so. Maybe after graduation, then you could fly up for a couple days. We'll see. Hey, listen, you, I better get going, huh? <laughs> okay, thanks for calling. See you Friday night, right? Yeah, I wouldn't miss it. Russ, I love you. Are you insinuating that I don't care about Miriam? I mean, after all I've done to prove to you that I do care for her? Then why won't you go see her now? Well, if I tell you, you'd laugh at me. Try me. I don't like hospitals. They, they scare me. Oh, Nancy, that's ridiculous. But they give me the creeps. All those white uniforms and that, that smell. I, I, it just makes me so sad and nervous. Why didn't you tell me all this before? Well, I was too embarrassed. Nancy, I'll go with you and hold your hand. Please, Charles, don't make me do this. Otherwise, I'll turn into a basket case, too. Nancy, don't refer to Miriam that way, please. Well, you know what I mean. Yes, unfortunately, I do. Now, I'm sorry that you feel about hospitals the way you do, but Nancy, Miriam needs you. We're all she's got right now. Charles, as difficult as it is for me to stay away from that hospital, it's more difficult for me to force myself to go. All right, I understand. I'll, I'll think of some excuse to give Miriam. There's one other thing, Charles. Uh, I don't like living alone. Well, do you think I do? Well, why don't you move in with me, then? I won't until Miriam is better. She needs too much of my time now. But, Charles, she's much better than she was when she was admitted. Maybe when she's released, perhaps then. Now, I've got to be going. And I'll be sure to send your love. Oh, please do. Charles, am I going to see you again tonight, then? I'll call. Jean. Terry! <laughs> Carl, uh, how are you? Terry, it's so good of you to come over so quickly. Well, it was perfect timing. I was on my way out the door for work when I own came over. <laughs> well, we won't keep you long. Oh, it's all right. I've got some comp time I need to use anyway. And <laughs> this sounded important. Well, it is to us. Well, why don't you have a seat? Oh, yeah, please. Um, <clears throat> first, well, we'd like to really thank you for allowing us to stay here during the remodeling of the house. Oh, it's my pleasure, but I bet you're anxious to move back. Oh, it's the perfect house for me. Not that I haven't liked being here, but, you know, it's just not home. Uh, we talked about this this morning, and, uh, Carla, Jimmy, and I are not going to be moving back to the duplex with Mom. Oh, everything's fine. It's just that Carla and Jean need some time together, you know, to become one as the good Lord intended. And it'll be good for Jimmy, too. Mom's understanding as usual. Oh, you know, they were afraid I'd be, I was going to be hurt. But, you know, 
I want what's best for them. And I'm not afraid of being alone. Uh, I did it for years. Well, I must admit that I'm surprised, but I'm glad that you've all reached an understanding. Yes, and the redecoration is almost finished, and they'll need a place to live. The truth is, Jean and I have fallen in love with this house. I call it a dream house. But, Terry, we'd like to buy the house if you'd be willing to sell it. I haven't really thought about it. Don't feel that you have to decide now. Yeah. Well, I've been concerned about what to do with it. I don't need two houses, and uh, it's not good for it to be vacant. Well, look, it's like Carla said. I mean, you might want to give yourself some time to think about it, so... That won't be necessary. I'll talk to Mitch about handling the details. You will? Oh, yeah. Terry! <laughs> Thank you! You are very welcome. There are, there's nobody I would rather have live in Mother's house. And you know what? You're really going to be doing me a favor, because now the flowers and the lawn are your responsibility. Oh. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful how the Lord turns a trying situation like remodeling into something good? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Dr. Martin. Oh, Mr. Carpenter. How's Miriam? Better than last night, although she is a bit confused. Confused? Don't be alarmed. It's not uncommon for patients to uh, become temporarily disoriented during drug withdrawal. Well, what happened? I received a phone call last night from the duty nurse saying that Miriam wanted to see me. Evidently, she had a nightmare and was very upset. When I arrived, she thought I was Paul. Her ex-husband. Poor Mim. Why wasn't I called, doctor? Well, there was nothing you could do, and she was in no real danger. Dr. Martin, there is something I have to know. Will there be any permanent damage? It'll be a while before that can be determined. And just how long is that? Miriam's psychiatrist can answer that question for you better than I can. But her problems are drug-related. She doesn't need a psychiatrist. It's standard procedure, Mr. Carpenter. Uh, M Mr. Carpenter, just one more thing. Um, most of the drugs we found in Miriam's system are sedatives, expensive prescription drugs. Do you know where she was getting them? If I did, Dr. Martin, I would have put a stop to it a long time ago. Ma'am? Good morning. How are you feeling? Tired. Dr. Martin said you had a rough night. Daddy. Yes? Where's Nancy? Why doesn't she come to see me? Uh, Nancy isn't really feeling very well. I talked to her this morning and she sent her love to you. She doesn't love me anymore. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Of course she does. No, don't lie to me. Because you don't love me anymore either. I love you more than ever. And Mother doesn't love me either, because she doesn't come to see me. If she knew you were here, she'd be here too. Daddy, no one cares about me, because they know I'm never going to get well. Now, where did you get a silly idea like that? Well, Nancy told me. Oh, you've got to be mistaken. You've been confused lately. Everybody cares about you, and everything about you is going to be fine. I'm going to see to it personally. Daddy, it's terrible that nobody loves me anymore. I'm so lonely. Get out, Dad. Um, you don't make it easy for a guy to apologize, do you? I don't want to hear it. I don't know what came over me last night. I really am sorry. Not accepted now. Would you please leave? Look, you've made it clear you're not interested in mixing business with pleasure. But I'm still your producer and the guy who pays for this room. Oh, really? Well, last night it was uh, sleep with me or no more music, remember? Words spoken in a moment of passion. They're included in my overall apology for the whole bad scene. What's this? I'm going home to Kingsley for the day. Without checking with me first? What if I had something planned for you? Okay? Mr. Producer, I would like to go home and spend the day with my husband. Thanks. It just so happens today's slack. You may go. As long as you're back in time for tonight's show. I'll be back in time. When did you decide this? It wasn't because of you. Russ called this morning. Oh, finally. After, what, two days? 
I spoke with him last night also. And no, I did not tell him what you tried. <laughs> he doesn't bother me. He thinks I've tried it before anyway. Does lover boy know you're coming? No. <laughs> you're pulling one of his tricks. David, I'm not pulling any tricks. I just miss him and I want to be with him. Yeah, well, evidently he doesn't miss you very much or else he'd have called, now wouldn't he? No, it's, um, it's time for final exams and he's been very busy with studying. He's been under a lot of pressure. And, well, look, he just needs me right now. Oh, how oh. touching. Just remember, I need you here, too. Yeah, like you needed me last night, huh? Well, no, thank you. I didn't need you. I wanted you. There's a difference. You're the one who needs me. For my career, yes. But that's it. So I misread the situation and overstepped a little. A little! D I apologized, okay? No, it's not okay, because I don't want it to happen again. I'll make it up to you tonight after the show. I'll take you to Strider's. Be too tired. And tomorrow night. Don't you ever give up? No, don't answer that question, because you answered it last night. I was hoping you'd give up. <laughs> no way! Mr. Carpenter, are you all right? Mrs. Davidson, it isn't easy for a father to realize he's failed. I couldn't even convince my own daughter that I loved her. Having her admitted here for treatment proves your love for her. She'll realize that one day. But I could have prevented all this. I moved out when she needed me most. I was trying to help her into thinking she was more self-reliant, more independent. Oh, I'm sure you had good intentions. I did, I did, but what good is that doing Miriam? I simply was never the kind of father that she needed. I spoiled her rotten, I gave her everything she needed, and she grew up to expect it. Miriam can bounce back from this stronger than ever. The fact still remains that I failed her. As parents, we try to give our children what's best, and we only hope and pray that it's really best for them. Yes, but did I do my best? When Miriam feels better, you can ask her that question. Yes, if she can answer. Dr. Martin has indicated that there may be permanent damage. Don't give up hope, Mr. Carpenter. All things are possible with the Lord. Mrs. Davidson, I am a man who doesn't hope for things. I make them happen. It's just that I feel so helpless in this. brings you here? I'm looking for Mom or Ben. Oh. Looks like the big girl's got big problems. Big disappointment is more like it. Did Mom tell you that I've applied all over the city for a teaching position? Well, she didn't mention it. Of course, we haven't had much time to talk these days. This is my fourth rejection. And it was a school I really wanted to. Oh, no. no wonder the glum face. I'm sorry. But don't give up, Mel. You know? I was rejected by two med schools before I finally got my M.D. through a correspondence course. <laughs> okay, you did it. Did what? Cheered me up. You are always so straight-faced when you say things like that. Well, it's nice to know I haven't lost my touch. But I really was rejected by two med schools. Mom, what are you doing here? I was in the area, and I wondered if you or Ben were available for lunch. Well, at 10 in the morning? Do you have time for a coffee break? Even the director of nursing is entitled to a break. You're right. Thank you, Alex. <laughs> so, young lady, what's on your mind? Another rejection. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. Well, at least I have a few more applications that haven't been turned down yet. A lord is just weeding out his garden. Keep that chin up. You know, you've still got a lot to be thankful for. Well, I just talked with Charles Carpenter. He's really down right now. How's Miriam? According to a chart, she had a restless night. Ben was called out late last night by special request. It seems Miriam thought that Ben was Paul. Well, no wonder Mr. Carpenter was so distraught. You don't tell me that the great Stoneheart has a soft spot. He is genuinely concerned for Miriam and feeling more than a little guilty about how he's functioned as a father. Well, that makes twice she's been confused recently, when she accused me of stealing her husband and then thinking that Ben was him. She needs our prayers. Well, I've already started that. But back to the original question. Lunch? Oh, I can't do it today. I came in late and I've got some work to do on the new wing. At least she makes time to have dinner with you sometimes. How about one night this week, Mom? Um, we'll talk about it later. 
Say, how'd your dinner lap go last night? Uh, okay. You know, Ben and I were discussing how the Davidsons and the Prescotts are mingling so much lately. You and Mr. Prescott working together on that new wing, Peter working for Prescott Development, and Gil's remodeling Ben's clinic. Besides, Mary Ann and I will be graduating. Excuse me. Uh, I have to go now. Was it something I said? You look like you're feeling better this afternoon. Yeah, I do. That nap was just what you needed. I'm really thirsty. There you go. Why don't you wear a, a uniform like the other nurses? Well, because I'm not a duty nurse now. I was recently promoted to director of nursing. Then you're not really my nurse? Not officially. But I'll drop by from time to time, check on you. See if there's anything you need that I can get for you. Well, I need, I need Nancy, but Daddy says that she's not feeling well. She should take some of my medicine. What medicine? Well, the medicine she always got from me when I didn't feel well. Like aspirin? No, it was special medicine from a doctor. What doctor did you go to? I didn't. Nancy did. You mean Nancy went to a doctor and got you medicine? I think so. Nancy was my friend.